Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to Lin Fami History of Japan. Today's episode is called Emperor Tenmu Becomes a God. Okay. <laughs> if you want to check out my previous reactions, I'll put the cards right up here. Just click on them and you'll be able to access them. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one. If you just won a huge war and held more power than anyone else in the country, what would you do? Would you sit back and enjoy the spoils? Would you change the country for the better? Emperor Tenmu found himself in this position, and he chose to become a god. Tenmu defeated his nephew, Prince Otomo, in the Jinshin Civil War. The Jinshin War was like this YouTube channel. It was important and transformative, but it doesn't get enough credit. Tenmu's win allowed him and his successors to transform the limited Yamato court into an imperial Japan paving the way for a strong central government. Tenmu milked his victory like one milks an almond. Does that make sense? Who cares? He made room for his allies in the new government by executing and exiling his nephew's allies, occupying the very tippy-top of the government where his consort, the future Empress Chito, and his sons. It became a court ruled by Tenmu's branch of the imperial family. Tenmu also brought back the Kabane titles of nobility, Prince Shotoku had taken steps to phase out the Kabane system years before. In the old system, there were dozens of titles, the highest being Omi and Muraji. The strongest clan leaders hung out at these top two levels. The Omi and Muraji titles survived Shotoku's reforms, allowing the influential clan leaders to stay in power. Tenmu brought back the Kabane system, but he was a devious dude, so he reformed it to his benefit. Tenmu reduced it to eight ranks but he put Omi and Muraji near the bottom. The top titles went to Tenmu's allies during the war and the clans that supported him. You would think this would have made the Omi and Muraji leaders resentful, and it did. But it would have been worse if he had removed the Omi and Muraji titles altogether. Although these titles were no longer as influential, because they had been in effect for so long, they still held prestige. It's like being class president. It sounds cool, but you just end up choosing what kind of toilet paper goes in the school restrooms. One ply? Or half ply? Tenmu's change allowed the old elites to keep their prestigious titles while creating a new class of elites friendly to him. Tenmu attained more power than the emperors before him. With this power, Emperor Tenmu decided to do something that was either genius or massively egotistical, probably both. He decided it would be fun to be a god. If you could ask Tenmu why he did what he did, he'd probably tell you it was for the good of Japan, and it would be hard to argue with that. At the time, the shadow of Shila hovered over the Japanese archipelago. Shila had taken control of the Korean Peninsula. If they had chosen to invade, Japan with no unified army would have been in trouble. From his experience in the Jinshin War, Tenmu knew what a hassle it was to go to each regional clan chieftain to muster troops for an adequate army. Tenmu made reforms to strengthen the central government, following in the footsteps of previous reformers like Shotoku and Tenji. He made military changes like creating imperial armies around the capital and at strategic regions, making chieftains military commanders for the court, and improving roads so troops can move about freely. Tenmu pushed for the governmental changes that we talked about earlier to build a unified state that could combat foreign threats. He used China as a model for his reforms, like his predecessors. He also looked at the governments of the Korean kingdoms to figure out what to do and what not to do. To put it in simple fifth grade terms, the Pekje king didn't listen enough to his ministers, and the Koguryo king listened too much. Shila's government was in between. The king was strong, but so were his ministers. The throne made decisions after ample discussion with his court. Tenmu liked that model. It obviously worked because Shila was victorious. So how and why did Tenmu make himself a god? Remember that religion and superstition permeated people's lives back then. Religious power led to secular power. Tenmu made the Ise Grand Shrine the most important shrine and dictated that an imperial princess must always be at the Ise Shrine to worship the sun goddess Amaterasu. He placed the sun goddess above all other kami. It was the imperial house's ancestral kami. 
He and his successor, Empress Jito, commissioned the creation of the Nihon Shoki and Kojiki, the oldest Japanese historical texts that survived to the modern day. There was a lot of propaganda in these texts, let's be honest. The writers often engaged in a writing technique called、um, making shit up. The claim that the imperial house can trace its ancestry back to the sun goddess is found in these works. The texts legitimize the Japanese emperor by proclaiming that he had divine blood, making him a divine being. They created a whole line of emperors at the beginning to link the emperors to the sun goddess. The text also legitimized Emperor Tenmu himself by portraying him as the good guy in the Jinshin War. Not saying he wasn't a good guy, but there is only one side of the story, one very friendly side. After Tenmu's death, his consort took the throne as Empress Jito. By that time, Tenmu, Jito, and their offsprings were already being called living kami, descendants of the sun goddess. It was either Tenmu or Jito that started using the term Tenno to refer to the emperor. Tenno means heavenly king. This is usually translated as emperor in English. They then retroactively used Tenno for all previous emperors. The Japanese went further than China in its veneration of the emperor. In China, the emperor had the mandate of heaven, not to be confused with the mandate in heaven, which is just having a good time at the most famous gay club in London. The mandate <laughs> did not mean the Chinese emperor was a god, it was a divine right to rule granted to a mortal by heaven. The Japanese were like, oh yeah? Our emperor is not even mortal. He is a god, a descendant of a Matarasu. I'd like to thank the two new patrons, Tercero and Spencer Smith. Welcome, guys. We also have a second emperor patron now, Trevor Glisson. Thank you so much, Trevor. It means a lot. It's weird, though, having two emperors doesn't make sense. I think they have to fight to the death now. Pretty sure that's how it works. Good luck. Love you guys. Those who write. History down are the true victors, and Emperor Tenmu and his family are the true victors. They did what no other emperor has done before. They have been venerated as gods, as living kami, and it, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I, I have to give him mad props. <laughs> really, he. he Did a political maneuver that no one could challenge or replicate. I think. I don't know. We'll have to see with later episodes what happens to、uh, the, the family of Emperor Tenmu.、Um, but I think his branch of the family, of the Imperial Yamato family, is going to last for a very long time.、Um, I think he solidified that kind of、uh, dynasty with his. Uh, wife, the queen.、Uh, is she called the queen? I forgot. I forgot what what's the title. But her and her ch- and his children are going to be、uh, continuing on this tradition of venerating them as gods. So yeah, the Nonshuki and the Kojiki.、Uh, yeah, they might have been propaganda, but you know. <laughs> It was good propaganda, you know, making them look like the good guys、um, and making、uh, the emperor's enemies, especially、uh, Otomo. The. Wait, was it Otomo? Yeah, it was Otom- Otomo.、Uh, the, the previous emperor, the villain, making him seem as if he was the bad guy. And considering what happened in the last episode, you know, how Otomo and his advisors, you know, were telling him that he should attack. Owama,、uh, he should arrest him because he's going to become a threat to your kingdom, to your throne.、Um, it is understandable, you know, that in these historical propaganda texts,、uh, they would talk of the emperor in a very, very good light. Like he was the good guy in the story, he was the good hero saving、uh, Japan from what could have been calamity.、Um, so, yeah. He did good and he reformed the military to a certain extent, preparing for a possible Shila invasion.、Um, the clans that were you know, pushed aside during previous、uh, emperors has now been reinstated. The clan, mem-、uh, the clan leaders, the clan 
uh, chieftains have now got that kind of legitimacy again, especially the ones that supported him during the civil war and those that did not, you know, they've been pushed aside. They're still important, but not as important as before. So that's also like another political move, you know, keep your enemies close. Uh, and yeah, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see how this all turned out after that civil war where Obama did not want anything to do with the throne. Like he gave up, he gave up any kind of ambition to become emperor. Um, after he got that test, <coughs> test from his uh, brother to see whether he's going to try and usurp the throne from his preferred successor, who was Otomo. So he gave up, he went to the mountains, Otomo followed him with his soldiers. He came back from the mountains and he whooped his ass. And here we are. He became what he did not want to become. Hmm. That's, that sounds like a very nice story, you know. Something that you've never wanted or something that you've wanted, but you gave up on it. But then you come back and you have it. Sounds like a very good inspirational story. <laughs> Okay guys, um, if you like the video, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and I will see you next week. Bye bye.